Good morning and welcome to today's digital discussion on the topic of creative industries, pathways to accessing industry best training in partnership with Business News Wales and the Cardiff Capital Region. So I'd like to introduce the panel here today. I'm Alison Dowsell, Managing Director of Screen Alliance Wales. I have Sue Jeffries here from Skill Cymru. I have Tom Ware from the Faculty of Creative Industries, University of South Wales and Rich Moss from the Gorilla Group. So welcome, thank you all for giving up your time this morning. Um, so our objective here is to discuss the growth um, and the success of our creative industries um, and the different opportunities and resources available to those intended in pursuing a career in the creative industries. So I'm gonna start off by um, one of our writer and well-known directors, Phil John, um, one of our facility companies, Danny Hargreaves from Real FX, and Graham Bezik from Mad Dog Casting, um, has said that we've all built a world-class creative industries in Wales. Um, what's your opinion? Do you think we're good at it? So um, I'd like to direct this first question to me. <laughs> so I've been here, I suppose, since, um, well, I know when I got here, I got here in the 90s. Um, started in a facility company servicing lighting and manpower to the major productions in, in, in Wales at the time. But I can honestly say in this last year, 18 months, I've never ever seen it so busy. And in particular, looking forward to how busy it is now. Um, we've probably got, we are all hosting now the Saturday night drama and it's all coming from Wales. So I'd like to hear um, your thoughts then, uh, Tom, on, on this. Um, well, I, a bit like you, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an immigrant. I uh, came to Wales, uh, to work in Wales in 2008 um, as, uh, from the BBC in uh, Bristol. And I came to work in Wales for an independent production company called Rondo, who's still around, till, still one of the largest independent production companies in, in, in Wales. And I have seen just in the 10, 12 years I've been here, a huge, huge growth, not just in the amount of um, productions, uh, screen productions that are happening in Wales, but also in the breadth of the productions and the breadth of talent um, that has developed as a consequence of that. Um, everybody that everybody talks, <clears throat> used to talk about Doctor Who and the impact that Doctor Who had, but really the growth started after that with, the, you know, with the... Um, Porth Tiger, the BBC drama studios down in the Bay, but also just, you know, huge independent um, production companies like Bad Wolf setting up in Wales. Obviously, Rich's company, the Gorilla Group, uh, their post-production facilities, fantastic operation that they have there. So it's not just that the growth of the creative industries and the opportunities that that creates for people to develop their careers, it's the breadth of those careers. Everything from children's TV, um, Welsh language, content right the way through to obviously his dark materials and discovery of witches etc the stuff that it's being made in wolf studios so it's it's been fantastic and it's a really exciting time covid notwithstanding it's still an exciting time um to be working wales thanks tom rich i mean we tom mentioned you just now you have that fa fantastic facility at rothlock porth tiger so what's your thoughts are we doing enough are we good enough well, I, I think how good how good are we? We are we are really good. I mean, I think it's a, it's typical. The Welsh way is never to um to shout about how good you are, but you know we are delivering to the world and we are delivering excellence to the world. So by definition, we are we are really good. I mean, we're we're delivering to Netflix, to Hulu, BBC Worldwide, HBO. So there are world class deliveries coming from us, and uh, and it's not just drama. It's not just scripted, but Wales has always been, uh, you know, um, the factual kind of um, genre has been something that we've done forever. And, uh, you know, with the on-demand platforms now, I, I was just going through Netflix the other day and just going, did that, did that, did that, did that. There's so much on there that the world is seeing. So I think as we get so much exposure on the world platform, I think a lot of productions are just feeling more confidence as well in Wales and Wales's ability to deliver. And are just seeing that because it's so important to the Welsh economy and our Welsh creative industry is so flourishing, 
that we're just seeing more people wanting to come in and, and make use of it. So I think we are really good and we just need to grow to service the demand now. So thanks, Rich. So, you know, we are now producing in Wales Emmy and BAFTA winning productions. You know, we're seen all over on the world stage, but do you think we're doing enough to help uh, the native Welsh productions, the in Wales productions be behind and in front of the camera. Sue, I wouldn't mind hearing from you what you think about that. I'm of a generation um, that kind of that remembers working on the bread and butter productions, your SOC, your BBC, your ITV Wales productions, learning your craft, which then meant that you could go on and work on these international huge productions. Um, and I think that system is still there, really, and that we need to not forget those productions as well, that they need to be serviced as well as the huge productions need to be serviced. Um, we, I don't think we ever bring enough talent through, and I, I don't know if we ever will. Uh, I think we, we try and we need to keep on trying. Um, there are different routes into the industry now, I think, which are better than it's ever been. You know, there, there's always been a good graduate way into the industry in Wales, I think. Um, yeah. And as Rich says, it's not the Welsh way to shout about who you are, what you are, what you do. Um, but it's the Welsh way is also to be academic. You know, the academic way has always been the way to get forward. But I don't think that that is the only way in anymore. Um, since 2011, there's been the apprenticeship route, which gives you a qualification, it gives you a diploma, not a degree, um, and it suits people who maybe wouldn't think of the academic route, but want the more kind of hands-on working route into the industry. And I think that's the way that's going to grow in the future. Yeah. Rich, what do you think? What's your views? Well, in terms of are we producing enough native Welsh talent for the pipeline? I think that's their thing, is that the pipeline is, is getting wider, it's getting bigger. Wales has always been fairly self-leveling. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm one of the people that you know, started off 30 years ago and I had to go to London um, to actually work on the kind of programmes I wanted to, get the experience I wanted to, and then I came back. Um, but I don't think there's the need for that kind of talent drain now because we have the opportunities here in Wales, but we're seeing such an explosion of demand. We're just not getting enough people through because it's very difficult. I mean, a company like Gorilla, we're fairly large now in that we've got 60 staff, but we've grown organically over time where we haven't overstretched. We brought on people when we can and certainly every senior creative in Gorilla now started as a junior but I think we're seeing the need now to really embrace any schemes that there are and just bring talent through as much as we can for the rest of the industry so I think um, there is a shortage and we just need to accelerate uh, our ability to bring people in get them up to speed and, and get them working because there's definitely a desire now I mean lots of the productions uh, whether they're factual uh, new production companies coming in, the incumbent companies here, all these large scripted uh, people want to use local, the local workforce. There's a real desire to the point where if you can put your hand up and go, I'm Welsh and I live here, there's a really good chance you're going to get on it. So we just got to identify these people, get them through and, uh, and start using them. Because after we've got a pipeline now where it's not just one job that then leaves. We just need those sustainable productions where a person can start as a, a second or a trainee, move up to first and move along. And after, you know, by year three, they're in quite a good position and they will move up and then we will just have the workforce that we need. Okay, Tom, do you want to? Yeah, well, I, I just concur with what Sue and, and, and Richard said yeah. really, which is that the, the, the opportunities now are, you know, many and various compared to possibly even five years ago. Um, I think there's always been, or here, in, hitherto there's been accusations about how, you know, you, you talk about people at the top in TV and film and they say, you know, there isn't the talent in Wales. A lot of that was about trust. 
was about people being able to trust people in Wales to deliver. And every single time that they have, and I'm, you, know, you can go back 15, 20 years, every single time that they've trusted people in Wales to deliver high quality content, be it scripted or unscripted or whatever, they've always delivered. So gradually, it's a gradual process. It's part of a, a bigger shift in the screen industries out of London. Uh, and you've seen it happening in, in, in Salford Keys and in Glasgow, obviously. But that trust and that building up of a talent pool and as Richard said a big part of that is is um, sustainable productions long-term productions large-scale productions which allow people to develop their careers and to build up their skills and expertise and move around and that's always been the issue in Wales has been just the scale of the enterprise we've reached a scale now where that is now possible and as Richard said and Sue said it's possible to enter into the industry without having to have an academic background. It's also possible to have an academic background and actually be fast tracked very quickly. A lot of our graduates, mm. you know, graduates have over 40 graduates working on start materials. We've got 20 graduates now working on the third series of sex education. Those opportunities are there. You don't have to leave Wales anymore. Of course, you can leave Wales and come back and bring those skills. And we're seeing a lot of people coming into Wales to develop their skills. So I just think it's that critical mass we've reached now, which is it's a very different prospect going forward to how it was even five years ago. Definitely. Which brings me on to my uh, next question. What resources are available for local people out there trying to get into the creative industries? What training is there? Um, Sue? So I, I suppose my expertise is the apprenticeship because we deliver the apprenticeship um, in Wales. As I say, it's been there since 2011. It's growing every year. Um, you know, we've got examples of former apprentices um, that started off as very junior apprentices in radio sports, for instance, that are now established radio producers. Um, I was talking to somebody who, well, one of my first apprentices in 2012 was a camera apprentice, is now directing news in BBC. Um, two of my former apprentices are directing news in ITV, one in Bristol, one in Cardiff. You know, I can go on and on. I can, if you've got a fortnight's mm -hmm. bear. I can bore you, so I can bore you forever. <laughs> we haven't. <laughs> no, exactly. Um, but I think it proves, if you look at our website, it proves that, you know, it's it's a good way in. Um, it's a practical way in. You're working from day one. Um, you're not paying for your qualification. You're being paid to work. Um, that are, We never know where the jobs are, but we've had jobs in production, in post-production. As Rich said, you might start as a runner next year. You may be... The key then uh, the year after that you might be third then second and all the way up um we've we've had apprentices we've got probably five or six different apprentices that have worked for Eli's effects um post-production in casualty we've got five or six apprentices that are still there um cameras i said um costume locations art departments digital marketing it goes on and on um, and now we've just launched a shared apprenticeship scheme, which is called Crew. Um, and the applications closed at 12 o'clock today, actually. Um, for that, we've had loads of applications um, where apprentices will work on different productions depending on the length of time that people need an apprentice. Mm. What I would say, though, um, about apprenticeships, it boils down to the production companies and the employers understanding that any junior role could be an apprenticeship. If you want that to happen, there's nothing to stop no. any junior role being an apprenticeship. Um, and I, I think, as Tom says about the graduate roles, they're, they're a brilliant. <clears throat> I think you need to go to university to do some things, such as animation, visual effects. You need that three years mm -hmm. to learn for the sake of learning. Um, but there are other jobs where apprenticeships are the way to go. Definitely. And, and, you know, we can evidence that as well with my relationship with Tom and the University of South Wales and you, Sue, and, and, and Rich. You know, you could draw an arrow here and we're all connected. I mean, you, since we launched Screen Alliance Wales, we've had, I think we're up to about 10,500 young people people from all different back, backgrounds coming into the industry, you know, and it is winning the hearts and minds of those heads of departments and the people that, you know, are running production to, to let them give opportunity. And they do because they see these people coming in and having that opportunity to learn. And on one production, you can go from, 
you know, being a trainee and then on your next production, you are ready to fly. And mm. it's the commitment of people, I think, like the people on this panel now that will make the difference to training going forward. Um, Rich, can I just bring you very briefly in? Because I know we've got a few questions to get through and we've and we're running out of time. Yeah, sure. I mean, I think um, it's all about scale again. Um, I know at Gorilla, we were very ad hoc with training that was more about when when needed where it's now we're getting to the size and scale i mean we had two technical operators two people that did the work around an early and a late now we've got a shift of about 10 or 12 and actually people are being requested to no can we have them for four months on this project yeah. can they specialize and do this so we're seeing that need coming through and uh, same with uh, with runners. I mean, unfortunately, COVID hit us, but you know, we're we're just starting to be of the scale now where we can actually have a training policy where we can go every year. We will take on three new runners. Of those, two of them will move into this department because two people in that department will have moved out to specialised, and then those people will be our next colorists. So you know, the light is at the end of the tunnel, and we can see this definite need for progression. And all the productions are really up for it. I mean, they really want to use new people yeah. as well. So I, you know, I think it's just really great now that we can we can have a path for people. Thank you. So are we doing enough to improve access into the industry then? Do you feel, you know, a young person coming into the industry, do they think that they can have equal access? I mean, at Screen Alliance Wales, we we really do not welcome nepotism we like to offer a chance to everybody to come into the industry regardless of your background regardless <coughs> of whether you've been to university whether your mother father sister brother nephew has worked in the industry do you think i mean and i know we need to do so much more but do you think we're doing enough and you know and i you know tom what do you think well, uh, you could never know, do enough, right? You can never know, do enough. But that's not to say that one of the wonderful things about working in Wales, the thing I come back to time and time again, is that people have a vested interest in actually, people want other people to join them. They, the companies are enlightened. They understand the need for new talent. New talent's really, really, really important. And speaking of somebody, I, I was trained, I, was in, I worked for BBC for 15 years. I could saw those progression routes and those talent routes, that rope ladder that you feel brings you up in your career i saw that being taken away as the bbc reduced in scale you could see it happening and you know thank goodness that we've got people like sue working and we've got employers like rich and his uh, and the gorilla group because everybody knows how important new talent is you know the, it's a truism that to say that you know talent is everywhere but opportunity isn't and the wonderful thing about Cardiff at the moment is opportunity is there for talented people and the right people and you don't feel that people are glued to an outdated way of how if you're going to get in the industry the biggest problem with the creative industries is nepotism is people getting into creative industries because they need to come in at short-term contracts so therefore you know it's about who you know not what you know we um working together and i think also with a number of really key major employees right across the screen industries and screen lights worlds being at the forefront of this are looking for opportunities to create permanent and long-standing progression routes so people can move up. It's about talent. It's not about who you know, it's about what you know, and it's about how hard you're prepared to work and how ambitious you are. So I feel that, you know, not only are the opportunities there for people, but they're, they're becoming more and more available to the right people. Um, things like Sue's apprenticeship schemes, you don't, you don't have to go to university to do that. Yeah, of course, I'm gonna say go to university. It's brilliant, but you know, if you're not academically driven, there are ways into this industry. And Sue, as she says, has a, so many success stories she can call on to show that it really works. It really works. Yeah, it really does. Um, so, you know, what advice now, sort of wrapping this up, if we can, what advice would you give to somebody who's starting out and wants to get into the creative industries? What would you say? What would you say to them? How can they approach this? I mean, I know from Screen Alliance Wales, we, we get into the classroom and we start teaching at the age of nine of all the careers that are available to people that they have no, you know, no concept that you can be practically anything you want to be and you can make that work in the TV and film industry, whether it's catering, nursing, uh, painting, electrical. 
design, it all fits into the creative industries. And I think that's so important as doing that very early on in schools. Uh, Sue? I would say join everything. Um, you know, we've got examples of people that have been junior members of BAFTA um, into film. Uh, you know, join every, sign up to every newsletter. Um, make sure that you're in the know, that you know when these things are going. You know, be be part of Screen Alliance Wales. Um, every kind of newsletter there is, so that you know when there is an apprenticeship going and you are old enough, you apply. Keep on applying. If don't if you don't get it the first time, that's not the end of the world. It's probably because you can't drive or you're too young or you, your skills aren't quite right this year, but they might be great next year or the year after. Um, one of the things lots of my former apprentices say to me is that they, they think they needed to stand out um, and you can stand out in so many different ways. You know, I would suggest um, if, if there's a way of applying through the medium of Welsh, if, if an apprenticeship or a job says, that Welsh may be an advantage. Fill your form in Welsh, have a Welsh language CV. You'd be amazed how many people don't do that. Um, if you've got a different skill, if you've had to do something different, if you've stepped up, you know, if your hobby is, I don't know, uh, in COVID days, if your hobby is taking the dog, dog for a walk, but you're actually taking photos while you're out there, well, show us that. Stand out in that way, do what you can. Right, thank you. Rich? Yeah, it's interesting Sue says standouts because uh, I actually had an old fashioned letter with a stamp on it the other there day. There you go. And it really stood out. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Think, wow, that's a really interesting approach. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think, I mean, it's really what Sue said research, you need an understanding in what the creative industry is. Now, it's such a wide industry, but know what's out there. Um, social media, follow, follow things and just. Um, join, join, follow, and you will just get an understanding and you will see the news that comes up, things that are happening. And, you know, through that, that's how you get access. But, you know, we are, it's all about scale. I wish I could say I want to take on 10 people, 20 people every year. But we're still at this position of just, um, you know, is the work there? Is the work going to stay there? Will the client want to do that or want to go elsewhere? I think we're really on the cusp now of actually having opportunities. We just need to know we, we can really, um, they're going to be here for years to come so that we can just bring these people through with confidence of them having something at the end but um yeah join research social media and just be aware of everything every opportunity and use um screen lines wales you know we do have organizations out there now that know what's going on you know there are central uh, creative wales as well there are central organizations that know what's coming up and can advise that's something that we haven't historically had a lot of so you know that's another way to get in Great, thanks. And Tom, I'm going to leave you with the final words. <laughs> um, well, I, I would say two things, really. First thing is, 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 it's great to be ambitious. Be ambitious, but you don't have to know exactly what you want to do. I don't think any of us are necessarily doing, had the careers or doing the jobs that we thought originally we were going to do. So try everything, you know. Um, you don't have to be ambitious just to be one thing. Just the key thing is to get as much experience as possible and to be ambitious for what you want to achieve for yourself. The second thing I would say is we're just like you. You know, everybody wants to work with people they like, people who are hardworking, people who are committed to what they do, people who are creative and inspiring. So, you know, you can do this too. Don't ever let anybody tell you that you're not good enough to be part of this amazing world. You are and you can be. Uh, and it's a fantastic world to be part of. It's a really exciting, creative time to be working in Wales, working on so many different sorts of productions with so many different sorts of people and creating some amazing content. So it's a great time to join the creative industries and it will continue to be. So come and join us. It'll be brilliant. I think that's excellent remarks to finish up on. Thank you all so much for giving your time today. And uh, thanks again. Hope to see you all soon. Thank you. Thank you.